Okay, so today's lesson is objective 4.2c. It's the last part of objective 4.2. Today we're covering three different topics. They're interrelated, but not totally. Um, finding, well, they're interrelated anyway, um, but not totally. So your objectives. Number one, you can use a factor theorem. Number two, you can use zeros and other information to write polynomials. And number three, you can find K if I give you some information. So those are our objectives. And we are going to start with uh, this first example here. All right, it says use the factor theorem to show that X minus C is a factor of f of x. Now remember what the, what the zero factor theorem says. It says the f of c equals zero. That's what the factor theorem says. It's what we put on our key terms and ideas page. <coughs> okay, so we're taking the f of x. Here's our f of x. It's x to the fourth minus 3x to the third minus 3x squared plus 11x minus 6 uh, for c equals 3. So if I come up here, okay, so this is part of my linear factor, x minus 3, right? Because that's my c. So when I go to find my factor theorem, remember that I have to use the opposite of minus 3. So I'm going to actually use c. It told me what it was already. So we'll plug in a 3. So that's 3 to the 4th, minus 3 times 3 cubed, minus 3 times 3 squared, plus 11 times 3, minus 6. So the f of 3, which, P.S., the f of 3 should equal 0, per the factor theorem. Um, well, that's 3 to the 4th. Minus, I think that's also 3 to the 4th. Yeah, because it's 3 to the 1st. So I don't even want to do that math. I can, though. It's 81 minus 81, but I don't, I don't need to. Um, and this is 3 times, negative 3 times 9, right? So that's negative 27 plus 33 minus 6. So that's 0. Yeah, I'm sorry. My mom won't stop sending me messages. I never did tell her to I'm teaching, so I need to send her a message. I just turn my 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 thing off here because that's unprofessional. Okay, so what do we get? Negative 27 plus 33 is six. Six minus six is zero. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna write a conclusion. Therefore, x minus three is a factor. of x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 3x squared plus 11x minus 6 because um, per the factor theorem The f of 3 equaled 0, basically meaning it was a 0 factor. It was a 0. 3 is a 0. So when I get a graph it on a, a, a coordinate plane, my graph would cross at 3. And that's the factor theorem. It's the same as the remainder theorem, yeah? Except you getting a, specif a special answer, it's zero. And if zero is your answer, then that means that your polynomial is divisible evenly by your linear factor, which is kind of nice. So there you go. So that's the factor theorem. So that was objective number one. Objective number two is to write uh, polynomials given specific information. So let's take a look at this example. It says find a polynomial f of x with a leading coefficient 1. That's important. 
Uh, so I'm going to label my A equals 1 because that's my lead coefficient anytime I'm writing a polynomial. And it's crucial to make sure we know what A is because that term tells us when our the end behaviors of our, our polynomial, what's happening on the graph, we always need to know what A is when we're writing an equation. All right. And it having the given degrees and degrees, here's this, degrees tell you how many zeros, I'm sorry, how many X's, well, and zeros, you, you know what zeros are. We've been talking about those for like two months now, okay? So um, we're going to write the equation that satisfies these conditions. It has a lead coefficient of one, so that's important. A degree of three, which tells me how many x's are there going to be? Three. With our zeros at zero, five, and negative two. So here's the format that we're going to start with. We will start with the factored form of any trino uh, polynomial. It looks like this. A times x minus c times x minus maybe d because I can't just use c over and over again times x minus e dot 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 so you can see the pattern developing depending on how many zeros you have so this would be my starting point for writing my um, equation or my polynomial so I think that um, I will color code my first zero will be red my second zero will be blue that'll be my D and my third zero will be green. That'll be my E. Oh, that wasn't green. Back that up. Come on, E. Okay. And I think I'll just make my A purple. So my A is going to be purple. Okay, so um, we know A equals 1. Okay. So we're going to write our, our equation. So we're going to do f of x is equal to, I'm going to leave, I'm going to go ahead and do all my stuff in pencil and then I'll go back and put my colors in. So a, I'm going to leave that blank. x minus my c, x minus my d, x minus my e. I'm going to plug in my colors. So a is 1. My first um, 0 is zero so that's red picking up my blue pen my next zero is five and picking up my my uh, green pen my last zero is negative two and I think I'll go ahead and do a little change change there double negative okay now that's not the answer that I'm looking for I want the finalized version and this is called factored form. I don't want your answer in factored form. I want your answer in general form. So I'm going to ask you to multiply it out and write it as a normal polynomial would look. So we're going to multiply that out. So f of x is equal to, well, x minus 0 is x, and 1 times x is x, right, times and I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out. Well, I'll just do this. x minus 5 times x plus 2. So we're just simplifying here. Uh, my preference is to multiply the binomial pairs first or the binomial factors and then in the last step to distribute the, the monomial factor. So that's my choice. You can do it how you want. But I just like to do this first. x squared. Then I'm going to do my outer and inner multiplication together. So 2x minus 5x is negative 3x. And then negative 5 times positive 2 is negative 10. So my polynomial that I'm looking for, I'm going to now distribute the x to everything and completely multiply it out. That's x cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x. And there's your polynomial. And that is general form. And that's what I'm looking for on your homework. Okay. So putting it in, in, in factored form is okay. 
but it's not going to get you the point. You have to write it in general form. Questions about that? Please remember A is really important to find. On your homework, their problems will be like this example. However, on the test, it might be more like example two. So here we go. Writing polynomials f of x with a leading coefficient a. This time it's not telling me what my lead coefficient is. I have to find it. So a is your lead coefficient. So a is what we're looking for. Okay, so here's what we have. Find a polynomial of degree 3 with zeros at negative 1, 1, and 3 that satisfies the f of negative 3 equals 5. So let's see what information we can get from that. Degree of 3 means how many x's? So that's 3x's. Okay, so that's good to know. And then I have, so that, look, I have three zeros. So my first zero can be C. My second zero can be D. And my third zero can be E. And I don't know what A is. I don't know. But I do know one other thing. I know that it satisfies the f of negative 3 equals 5. That means it passes through the point negative 3, 5. It passes through that point. If I'm thinking about it on a graph versus thinking about it algebraically. So negative 3 represents my x in my equation. And 5 represents my f of x or my y. You follow me? So if I were to set up the equation uh, just in factored form, it would be f of x times a minus x minus c. How many zeros? x minus d, x minus e. Okay, so here's what I got to do. I have to find a because a is crucial. A tells me the end behaviors of my graph. How compact is it? How stretched out is it? I don't know until I find A. And I think I know everything but A. Do I know what f of x is supposed to equal? Do I know what my x's are supposed to equal? And I know all my zeros, right? So when I plug all that information in, the only thing I'm not going to know is A. And I can solve for A if I know everything else about this, this polynomial. So I'm going to pick up, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and just do everything that I can do in my pencil first, and then I'll start switching my colors. So that's all the stuff that I don't have to plug information in for. I'm going to pick up my purple pen to represent my y and x. So my f of x was 5, and my x's are all negative 3's. We've done this before. When we were writing equations of parabolas, we were doing this before, finding A. So it's definitely not the first time we've seen this. Then I'll pick up my red pen and I will plug in my first zero, which is a negative 1. Pick up my blue pen, my second zero is 1. Pick up my green pen, my last zero is 3. And then we'll attack this problem. So I'm back to my pencil now. I'm going to go back into my first zero and I'm going to uh, change change or my first linear factor change change that so we get 5 equals a times what do you think negative 2 times negative 4 times negative 6 so that's 5 equals I think that's negative 48 a then we'll divide by negative 48 so a equals negative 5 48 not a very fun a but a crucial a it tells us what's happening with our our um our curves for our cubic function here so we are not supposed i mean a wasn't the end goal the end goal was to write the polynomial with the lead coefficient a now we have a now we have to write the equation so over here we're going to write f of x. So I'm going to do a little line right there. So here we go. 
f of x is equal to, what's my a? Negative 548 times my first zero, which was x plus 1. Do you agree? Because it's negative 1 is my c, so positive 1. x minus 1. x minus 3. So we've written it in factored form, but you have to put it in general form. So we'll multiply it out. Again, my preference is not to distribute that negative 548s and then try to do math with that fraction all day long. No, thank you. I'm going to multiply my first set of binomial pairs here. And that looks like um, the answer to uh, a factored form of a difference of squares, right? x squared minus 1. If you're not seeing it, I just multiplied x times x, x squared, negative x plus x is 0x, and neg positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. <coughs> Let's finish that out. So we now have f of x is equal to, again, I do not want to distribute that negative 538s. Remember, 48s. You can multiply in any um, order that you want. So I'm going to distribute that. So x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 3. And then finally distribute the a term. So that's negative 5 48ths x cubed. So there's your a. There's your lead coefficient. And then we're going to do negative 5 38ths, 48ths, keep saying that, times negative 3, positive 5 sixteenths x squared. All I did was cross simplify. The 3 goes into 48 16 times. Okay. Uh, and then that would be positive 5 48ths x minus 5 sixteenths. And that would be the form that I would be looking for, say, on a test. Questions about that? That's a lot of work. So that was writing polynomials given certain information. So that was objective two. Now we're moving on to objective three, finding K. Questions? No, I know. We're almost done. Okay, so here we go. Finding K. So let's interpret this question. It says, find all values of K. Ooh, what's that mean? All values. More than one value for K. Okay, so maybe we're looking for more than one value of k. Find all values of k such that f of x is divisible by the given linear polynomial. What am I going to do to tackle that problem? Uh, let me ask you a question. Let's do this in numbers. How do you know that 12 is divisible by 4? Yeah, how do you know 12 is divisible by 4? What? Because 4 is a factor of 12, right? And, and what's the remainder if I do 12 divided by 4? What's the remainder? Zero. Zero. Is 12 divisible by 5? How do you know? Because 5 is not a factor of 12, and 12 divided by 5 has a remainder. So if I am trying to figure, uh, figure out what k's will make this polynomial right here divisible by x plus 2, could I use the factor theorem, because it has to be divisible by two, negative 2 in order to get no remainder, right? Doesn't the factor theorem help us prove no remainder? Right. So here's what we want to know. We want to know when is the f of x equal to 0? Actually, not the f of x. When is the f of c equal to 0? I think that would probably be the most efficient way to find this value k. So here's what we're going to do. We know that the f of c has to equal zero. So we're going, what is our C term? 
negative 2. And what is our f of x supposed to be when we're done? 0. So I'm going to take the opposite of that and use my factor theorem because I, I can make it true. I can make it equal 0. And that's what I want to do. I want to know what case could I plug in here? What numbers can I plug into this polynomial that's all weird looking here? Divisible by x plus 2. It shouldn't have a remainder. So here's what we're going to do. 0 is equal to k times negative 2 cubed plus negative 2 squared plus k squared times negative 2 plus 3k squared plus 3. Make sense? I think I know everything but k, right? Which is what I'm supposed to find. It's divisible if there's no remainder. So we get 0 equals negative 8k plus 4 minus 2k squared plus 3k squared plus 3. Let's simplify that. So we'll put our k squareds together. So that's k squared minus 8k plus 7. 4 plus 3. Well, that's a quadratic. So how many zeros do we possibly have here? How many k's? Yeah, 2. So let's try factoring. What are the factors of 7 that add to negative 8? Negative 1 and negative 7 will satisfy both of those conditions. So we're going to go ahead and factor k minus 1 and k minus 7. So what are the k's that will make our f of x divisible by x plus 2? 1 and 7. So let's write a conclusion and let's see what those possible polynomials are now that we know what our k's could be. So we're going to say, I just need to be able to see my equation here. I'm going to plug in, therefore, either f of x is equal to, here's what I'm doing. So you understand, I'm plugging 1 in for k. Okay? So 1x cubed plus x squared plus 1 squared, which is? 1, so plus 1x, plus 3 times 1 squared, which is 3, plus 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. So either that's plugging in k equals 1, so either that polynomial is divisible by x plus 2, or we also have to plug in the 7. So now I'm going to plug in the 7. So that's 7x cubed, yes? 7x cubed, so 7x cubed plus x squared plus uh, 7 squared x, so that's 49x, plus 3 times 49, which is 147. 147 plus 3 is 150. So those are the two polynomials um, are divisible. by x plus 2 per the factor theorem. So when you were finding k, you were finding k so that you could find the actual polynomials that are divisible by x plus 2. Questions about that? On the test, I'll probably just ask you to find k, but I do want you to understand what it means. Therefore, the, uh, the justification, or not the justification, but the interpretation of our answers for k. Questions about that? This? No. Mm -mm. Just do what I just do what the question asks. If I say justify your answer, then yes, but I don't. I didn't on the test. Okay, last problem. I will tell you this: tomorrow on the quiz, one of the questions is just like this, like just like it. 
So you want to study this one because also in the homework, there aren't any problems that are like this. So basically, this is it. This is it. You got to study it. So ask questions if you have them. This is a quiz question. All right. It's also a test question. So it says if f of x is equal to, here we go again, kx cubed plus x squared minus kx plus 5, find k such that the graph of f of x contains the point to negative 5. Not just any uh, polynomial passes through that point. And you're supposed to find k. Do we have enough information to find k? Yeah, this is our x, right? This is our f of x. So couldn't I just substitute those in the equation to solve for k? I absolutely could. So that's what we're going to do. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and write all of my k's and um, re remove all my x's. And then I'll insert my f of x, which is negative 5, and my x, which is 2, and we'll solve for k. And then we'll justify our answer, or we'll explain it in more detail. So we get negative 5 equals 2 cubed is 8, k, plus 4, minus 2k, plus 5. Ooh, linear, we don't have to, we don't have to factor... So negative 5 equals 6k plus 9. I think I'll go this way. So negative 6k equals 14. Right? Divide by negative 6. K equals negative 7 thirds. Right? So that's find k. That was the instructions. But I want to explain. Therefore, um, the f of x equals, replacing all of the k's with negative 7 thirds, right? That's 7 thirds, negative, sorry, negative 7 thirds x cubed plus x squared minus negative 7 thirds, that would be plus 7 thirds, x plus 5 contains the point to negative. And that doesn't really have anything to do with factor theorem, but it is kind of a precursor or a preview of what we're doing in, in lesson 4.3. So homework tonight, problems 13 through 20 and 39 and 40. And I'm also going to tell you right now exactly what you need to study for your quiz tomorrow. And I'm going to put it on the video so people who weren't here today can know. So there's your homework. And it's on a, a example one, uh, homework 4.2. Um, on the quiz, you will have to do one long division. And I am looking for process. Can you do it properly? Even if your answer is wrong, like you make a calculation error, I'll give you most of the point if your process is correct. Because it's new, I know. A uh, one synthetic division. One remainder theorem. So definitely study that. What's the remainder theorem? One factor theorem. And then one of these problems. The last example, example four. One example four on note page 4.2. So that's what you need to make sure you're studying for. That's what I'm being uh, that I'm uh, assessing. P.S. It is not multiple choice. It is all free response. So showing all your work so that I can at least give partial credit even if you make a mistake.